In the last video we already saw some operations for variables and some calculations with scalars and shortly introduced more um, complicated kinds of variables. And this time we want to elaborate more on vectors. Um, we already saw that you can put scalars like individual numbers into a variable and you also saw that you can use these variables to make some calculations where you place the original numbers by the variables. And you also saw that you can put values together with the command C. So for example, this Y should contain three values. And when I look up to the variable Y, you can see that these three values here are concatenated into a list of values. And this time we want to use these concatenated values, the vectors, uh, and see what you can do with that, how you can access them, and what kind of operations you can do on these vectors. Let me start with putting together a vector of um, find finding places of sites, and I call that sites, and it should contain three um, Bronze Age, early Bronze Age sites. That's Leubingen, Melz, and Buschevo. So, and when I look into that variable again, you can see here, as we have seen before, that uh, here are three uh, strings in this variable. And you probably notice this little one here in front of that. This counts the first um, element in the vector. And let me show you what happens if I make this screen a bit smaller and look into the size variable again. Now I can see that here a 3 is written. So this is always the first element of the vector that's represented in the output here. And the 3 means in this row, this row starts with the third element of that vector. So with that you have an overview on which place in the vector you are currently. With three values that's probably not so relevant, but if you have longer vectors that might be very helpful to have an idea um, where within the vector you can see a specific output. So when you have when we have set up this vector and we see that you can identify this um, the elements with their number with their place, it's quite uh, obvious that you probably also can access these elements with this number. So for example, if I put in square brackets here in the three behind the vector, you can see that I can access the third element in that vector. If I place that with one, I access the first element of that vector. And with that, we can access the elements there and have an output of this specific element, but we also can change this specific element with accessing it and we'll see that later. Um, when it comes to very long vectors, and you probably have some speaking names for individual places there, um, it might be more handy to not have to use the number, but to access this uh, object by name. And to do so, we had, have at first to introduce some names. And we do that by um, starting to build up another vector, which I call categories. And within that, I will record several side categories. So grave, for example, port, and settlement. Settlement. And we got this category vector from now on as my data vector. And I want to name that according to those sites here. So let's imagine you just recorded several sites and you have a variable that indicates what kind of site category 
this side actually is. And to do so, we have to, we can use the names. So if I just type in names of categories, currently I get a null output here because we haven't set any names for the categories yet. But we can do so by using the same command and assigning um, some vectors or some, some elements here. And I use here the sites vector that I created before. And when I again look up to the names of the categories, I get those elements here. If I look to the category vector itself, you can see that now the output is twofold. We have one line where the names are given, not within um, quotation marks, while within quotation marks we can see the elements that are within that vector. And from have done that, I can also access categories of Neubingen and I can see that this category, um, this element in the category vector has the value of grave. So that can, can become quite handy and this is also true for more complicated um, structures which you probably will see in the next video. So we also, let me introduce now a bit more uh, quantitative vector because now we have just worked on um, on strings, but we can also use the same approach for numeric vectors. So let's say we have a body height vector, and I call that height, and I enter there several variables, several values, let's say one. Four, sixty-seven, and eighty-seven, and one hundred sixty-five. So here, just the numbers appear then, and we have some names. And up here, I used already existing vector for the names, but I also could do it like uh, directly typing in that names without before creating a vector by just making an ad hoc vector with C. And I call that person Hannah, the next one Leon, next one should be whoops, Lucas, and the third one Leonie. And now when I look up the height vector again, you can see we have a named vector here and can easily access the height, for example, of Leon. And Leon has a height of 167 centimeters. Um, what we can do now with this vector is to make some calculations with that. For example, we can calculate the length or we can get back the length of the vector, which is not strictly a calculation. So height. And we can see that it contains four elements. And we also can sum these heights up. For example, if you want to build a human pyramid and you want to have an idea how big your height of this human pyramid would be, that would be 6 meter 73. And when we have the length and the sum, we also can calculate the mean height. So there the sum might become more relevant. So I take the sum and divide it by the length, the number of elements we have in that vector, and the result is the mean height um, of 1 meter 68. And of course in R there is a specific command for that, that's mean, and we get the same result. That's what we already said before, so, or saw before. What we also can do with this vector is to sort it. So when I say sort heights, I get the heights sorted from the smallest to the biggest. And we can also specify that we want this sorting to be decreasing by putting decreasing equals to true. And then we get the vector from the biggest to the smallest. Well, 
We also can get the minimum value of the heights by typing in minim and the maximum value by using the max command. And both together we can also get by saying range. And there we get the smallest and the biggest at the same time. Again, as a vector output. Okay, and we can also do some calculations on this vector. For example, if I take height and divide it by 100 to get the height in, uh, in meters, I get the output here. And you can see that I used a scalar or individual value and a vector. And when I do a calculation here in R, every individual value in this vector is divided by this scalar that I gave here in the equation. So you can see that every um, height is divided by 100. And also notice that this doesn't change my high original height vector as such. It just produces an output in the console. And if, I, if we don't capture this output, it's just on, on, on the console and then it's lost. You can write these values down if you like, but it is probably more convenient to store them in another variable for later use. So let's say height in meter that should equal to this here and now these values are stored here so let's assume we not calculating with a vector and a scalar but we use a vector and a vector so taking the height and let's say we add a vector that is um, one, two, three, four. And I should not forget to put C in front of it, otherwise it doesn't make any sense for R. And here you can see original values. And here down, you can see the new values. And you can see that for the first uh, element here, the first element of the second vector is added, while for the second element, the second element of the second vector is added. And here, in the third place, the 3 is added to Lucas and the 4 to Leonie, to the fourth. So um, two vectors are calculated uh, one element um, by the same position of the other vector. If I reduce the second vector to just two numbers, I get this situation that in the first element is the first vector is um, added with a 1, the second is with a 2, like we had it before, and then in, with the third element, we don't have a third element in the second vector, and now some recycling is going on. So you can see that um, here the first element is added again to the third place, and the second element to the fourth place. So the vector is recycled when it's true, it starts over from the first position again. So that's what you have to keep in mind if you add or calculate with different vectors. <coughs> to, there might be situations when you produce specific vectors, like to produce specific vectors automatically. For example, to make a sequence to count from a number to another number. And if it's a simple uh, consecutive number sequence, that's quite easy because you can just type in 1 double colon 10 and the output of this vector is uh, the consecutive numbers from 1 to 10. When it comes to a bit more complicated creation, you have to explicitly use the sequence command, which is seek. You specify from should be 1, 2 should be, for example, 10. And let's say it should just uh, produce every second number, so by should equal to 2. Of that, you get a, a vector from 1 to 10, where every element is 2 places away from each other. You can also specify, let's say, what if sequence from 1 to 100 and uh, it should have the length length 
come on, length of 20. And when I do that, I get a vector that is from 1 to 100, and I get 20 places out. So um, actually, it just spreads um, an equal distances the 20 values within our range from 1 to 100. With that, it's quite easy to produce some um, vectors where you can have some um, yeah, ranges or um, some up counting numbers. What you also probably would like to have is uh, if you, for example, have a vector that should look like that. It's tedious to type. So we have here are seven values of one. You could do it like that, but it comes quickly annoying if, let's say, you have 100 values that you where you always need the one. And for this, we have the wrap command, repetition, and replicate. And for example, I want to replicate my one seven times. When I do that, I get the same number here. I also could have written here explicitly how I want to have the parameters set by specifying here x and times, or I could also use this command to give me the x and how long how long the resulting vector should be. In that case, you can see all of this in the help file. Okay, um, you can also use this in conjunction, or you can also use that for, for string values. So let's say I want to have a text repeated 10 times, and the output here is my text 10 times. And also I can combine repetition with sequencing. I want to have a sequence, so let's start with an easy one, sequence from <coughs> 1 to 5, and I want to repeat this 7 times then it's counted from 1 to 5, and this whole thing is repeated 7 times. Okay, with that, it's quite easy to produce some vectors. Um, <coughs> we, already <said, coughs> pardon. we already seen that we can access elements in a vector by giving the number of the element or to have individual names given here. But what if we want to access, for example, multiple elements in that vector? <coughs> Let's say we have want to have the first two elements in that height vector. And we can now use our sequence to get this result. So I want to have the height from 1 to 2. And I get the first two ones. Or let's say I want to have the sequence from 2 to 3, and then I get the second 2. And <coughs> I also can put a minus sign here, which means that I want all values except the second to the third. And then I stop here. Yeah, no, everything's right. We have four elements, right? So I get the first, then these two are skipped, and then I got the last again. So with that, I can exclude elements from a vector by accessing them and explicitly get access to specific elements there. <coughs> and as I said before, I can use also this access for writing values into that. So I want to change the uh, heights of Leon and Lucas. <coughs> and I can do that by accessing these elements in this way and add, for example, oh, actually it's Hannah and Leonie, because these two are excluded by our, our current setting. I want to change Hannah to, let's say, 1, 5, and Leon, Leonie to 180. And when I do that and look again to the height vector, you can see that the first element from the height 
except for the second and the third, is set to 145, like here, Hannah. <clears throat> and the second element of that vector, except for the second and the third, is set to 180, and that's Aon here. And with that, you have a very fine granulated way of accessing elements in this vector. We can also use um, it use logical values to access elements and for doing so for example let's say we want to have all the heights that are bigger than 175 so height bigger than 175 and when I just type in this um, equation here I get a logical vector where Hannah is false because he's, she's smaller, Leon is also false, Lucas is true and Leonie is true. And now I can say that I want to access those heights where height is bigger than 175 and I get back Lucas and Leonie. So with that you can make some queries or access by controlled by the values of the individual vectors here. Um, you can also say, <coughs> turn that around and say we want to have all elements where the height is smaller than that. Of course we could do it like that, but let's make it a bit more complicated. So we want to exclude all these elements that are bigger than 175 and we've seen above that this worked in the case of um, of indi indicators, indices here, with the minus. So let's try the same thing here. And <coughs> you can say it doesn't work, um, because in this situation, when we have a logical vector, we have to negate this. And we're doing that by putting the exclamation mark in front of that. And now we can get negation of that. So if I just run this part of the code, you can see now that this is turned around. So whatever value here is was false is now true here. So um, with that, we can also use a negation of a query, um, query element. And with that, I think that's enough for how we can deal vectors, what we can do with them, how we can apply some functions and calculations on them, and how we can access elements in that vector. In the next video, we will go from this um, one-dimensional list to two-dimensional data representations like matrices and data frames.